Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, uh, I present to you uh, our uh, paper and thesis, uh, uh, which... Uh, Can you share your been... screen? Uh, uh, I'm sorry, I'm very sorry we didn't prepare any presentation oh, for it, okay. uh, but I will uh, show you some ideas uh, about our paper uh, in uh, live mode. Okay. So, so I present uh, the work from uh, Moscow Engineering Physics uh, Institute, uh, which done uh, and the Moscow uh, Agency of Artificial Intelligence, uh, which is done by me and my colleague uh, Vladimir Stepankov. So we present yet another criticism of Chinese room uh, from the position of uh, hybrid model of uh, uh, hybrid architecture of uh, artificial cognitive agents. So uh, uh, let me uh, just demonstrate you some ideas which I will I will draw with my tablet. Okay, all of uh, all this, all uh, what I uh, want to explain and uh, tell you is about the same theme understanding of uh what, what we see and what uh artificial agent uh, perceive uh so i continue the uh, previous and uh, pre previous uh themes uh and all this about a uh, symbol grounding problem so uh, what is symbol grounding uh if we uh, think about something, uh, then we uh, see with our inner eye uh, some images or hear uh, some uh, sounds or something like that. Uh, because uh, all our uh, symbols are grounded into uh, sensory systems, uh, basic sensory systems. Uh, so uh, we in our laboratory have solved uh, this symbol grounding problem uh, with very interesting idea. Uh, if, uh, so uh, before I uh, explain how we solve this symbol grounding problem, I will uh, show you our idea about uh, general cognitive architecture. So uh, we have sensory systems. Uh, different sensors which uh, perceive information from the environment. Uh, then we uh, send all this information into a multi-sensory integration system. multi-sensor integration. The purpose of this uh, system is to build uh, the uh, holistic description of perceived scene. And then uh, this holistic description goes to uh, two uh, controlling systems, uh, reactive, reactive and proactive. And this subsystem, uh, uh, they communicate with each other, and these as subsystems communicate also with uh, knowledge base. Knowledge base which consists of um, personal experience, uh, personal uh, life experience of uh, this agent. Uh, then uh, all these systems uh, send the signals to uh, uh, motor system, uh, which translate the signals, uh, the high order signals, uh, high order commands into uh, very low level uh, signals, which uh, something like assembly language or uh, machine code language in uh, computers. And this uh, low-level uh, signals goes to actuators. 
are which uh, conduct uh, this uh, response cycle to environment uh, back. And this uh, cycle of operation uh, is done uh, continuously and uh, perhaps even perhaps in uh, uh, concurrent mode uh, with the cell uh, because it's, it is uh, really uh, continuous. So uh, the human uh, being uh, is uh, uh, operating uh, something like that. So how we uh, use this uh, general architecture to solve the symbol grounding problem? Uh, it's very uh, tricky uh, thing. So uh, all uh, stuff goes through uh, this uh, system of multisensory integration. Uh, if we uh, for example, uh, let's uh, consider one uh, simple thing, uh, a table, a table uh, like an uh, object uh, which is always considered in such uh, circumstances. So uh, we can see a table, we can hear uh, the sounds which I uh, say table and we can even see the inscription in different uh, uh, scripts and so on. Um, uh, this is seen by us. This is uh, uh, heard. This is seen again. And all this stuff uh, goes into this system, multi-sensory integration system. Uh, and we uh, do something like that, uh, like this. Uh, we have a, a space of visual symbols, visual symbols uh, of tables, different tables uh, in different uh, positions and uh, rotations and so on. We have a space of uh, sounds which are uh, made with different amplitude voices and so on uh, uh, we have a symbolic space uh, which is uh, something like uh, inner uh, symbols of uh, our concepts and here we have a symbol of table and uh, then through this uh, system of uh, multi-sensory integration uh, we do a grounding of this symbol into one concept. So, uh, what are the uh, main positions of our criticism of Chinese rule? Uh, John Searle, uh, when uh, he proposed uh, this uh, well-known thought experiment, uh, he uh, think that this uh, Chinese room is uh, something like uh, tabula rasa, yes? And when uh, we uh, uh, input here something like this, uh, or something like Jodzi, uh, it has no uh, any uh, sense of uh, what it is. Uh, I think if uh, anyone uh, from you uh, don't know Chinese, uh, you have, uh, you too don't understand what uh, this means. Uh, but per but perhaps uh, you uh, can uh, think that this is <laughs> exactly the table in Chinese. Uh, so, uh, how to solve uh, this uh, strange situation? Why, uh, why Chinese room doesn't uh, have any sense of meaning of uh, these strange characters? Uh, so, because uh, there are no associatives, associative links between any uh, symbols of concepts in uh, its uh, mind or knowledge base uh, with this 
particular symbols. And if we uh, took this Chinese room yeah, and put it in mode of uh, learning, uh, then we uh, will uh, make a, an interesting process. We will take uh, these uh, Chinese squiggles and squiggles and uh, make an associative connection to this uh, 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 to this uh, symbol from symbolic space. Perhaps it will be connected uh, at first. Uh, the sound of these symbols will be connected to uh, audio space, and the inscription will be connected to symbolic space. And then, uh, when uh, we study Chinese language uh, in uh, very uh, intensive way, uh, this symbol will be connected to uh, di directly to uh, concept, and then it will has. Uh, different associative uh, links to all uh, symbols uh, which are uh, to which uh, this concept is grounded and through these symbols and through this uh, space uh, through this uh, concept it will be linked with other concept uh, concepts in uh, agents knowledge base so it will be perhaps uh, how it will be in english uh, me. I know German word, möbel, yeah. Maybe. So, furniture. Uh, uh, furniture? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Furniture, yes, of course. <laughs> uh, uh, perhaps other uh, concepts and so on. Uh, we will have very uh, dense network of concepts. To, uh, for in this knowledge base and when uh, this Chinese room is uh, trained is uh, uh, taught by such a process which uh, is analogous to how we uh, uh, train uh, human babies uh, it will understand uh, these squiggles and squiggles as uh, John Searle say, said because it uh, it Chinese room will have uh, these strong connections with conceptual symbols in its uh, knowledge base. So uh, this is the main idea, uh, which uh, is uh, uh, explored by us, by our collective in our laboratory. Uh, and uh, I hope our uh, paper, at, uh, which we uh, published at this conference and uh, all other papers which we already published uh, in other conferences uh, will be uh, a subject of interest for you. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, I hope my live presentation was, uh, was not very boring for you. I am ready for your questions. Thank you. That was really innovative. Okay, please, questions. Uh, I have a question. Um, Roman, uh, there is a, a, a possible version of the Chinese room argument that we should uh, imagine it like uh, the multimedia uh, Chinese room. And uh, in this case, instead of sending just symbols in Chinese, you also send videos and images of the objects of the world that you want to, to, to represent. And uh, well, in this case, uh, you are able to, to generate uh, uh, a better understanding of things that are not just symbolic, but also are iconic in the sense that they are uh, icons of, of uh, the things of the world. Um, how, how do you think that your argumentation uh, could uh, connect with this idea of uh, the multimedia Chinese room? Yes, uh, I think we uh, continue this argumentation uh, uh, because uh, we introduce uh, this uh, multi-sensory integration 
subsystem of uh, cognitive architecture and uh, through this uh, multi-sensory integration subsystem uh, all uh, that iconic re representations of symbols are connected which uh, with this, uh, with each other and uh, we talk not uh, not only about the images from uh, video sensors but we talk about uh, any other different sensory modalities uh, so uh, just uh, in this uh, so uh, you can see that uh, we extend uh, that uh, argument of um, multimedia uh, a Chinese room and uh, just now we use it in our work. Okay. Thank you. Heda has a question. Heda. Oh, sorry. Um, if I um, can uh, maybe f give a little bit different perspective on the um, uh, on the philosophical argument. Uh, so for us as computer scientists, um, a network of uh, concepts is um, maybe the same. Uh, and, and then you add in pictures from all sides and so on. And we have this idea, you have a, you have a connection and you have all these ideas connected. You have all these images, sounds and so on connected. And you have this connection graph. And we have this idea, this is meaning. And then we don't really understand what, uh, what, what Saul's problem is. But um, if I may go back to, I, I don't uh, remember, was it, was it Adam who said it, um, that we, if, if you take the introspective approach, um, which is not popular at the moment, but was so for, uh, for about 2000 years um, and longer, you have, a, um, you have the idea if you look at something um, or if somebody tells you something like, um, let's say, um, um, I killed a person uh, driving over uh, in, in a car accident. Um, then you say, oh my goodness, yeah? you have a meaning of, um, you know, what it means. So what, or, and, and the same for, um, for other, um, yeah, events, persons, and so on. Um, this introspection so if you if you look into yourself and then you you think about the objects um then you have a sense that there is a connection between you and the object so this is the this is what philosophers talk about when they uh, when they talk about symbol grounding uh we as computer scientists we have accepted okay um, we're just computers, so all we are actually doing is we are some sort of network, we are network connections, and then what's his problem? Um, it's just a matter of association of words with images and so on. But um, for the philosophical perspective, and the philosophical perspective is a lot wider than our idea of... Um, um, of computers or the human mind as a computer. Uh, that, that's kind of our basic axiom when we're talking here. So we can't really talk to Searle in that manner because um, what, what Searle is talking about is a lot wider than what we're talking about. Philosophers talk about ontologies. When we as computer scientists talk about ontologies, we mean uh, networks of concepts. When philosophers talk about ontologies, they mean the immortal soul, God, the universe. Yeah, so you have a you have a very different perspective at, at the world, and you can't tackle Searle's argument um, with, uh, with with a um, with a computer. Um, 
soft metaphor. I'm, I'm just trying to, uh, to explain what the main misunderstanding is between um, many computer scientists and, and what philosophers mean. Philosophers mean there is a connection between the one who means and the object meant, a real connection in the world. And so that's that's a little bit more than what we mean by it. Okay, that's just my comment. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, very interesting, but I am just a practical scientist uh, which don't use any metaphysics in my works, but uh, thank you. Artemy first, uh, he had her hand uh, previously. Thank you. Uh, Roman, uh, if the symbolic system uh, brings to you the Jodze, uh, which you cannot interpret, and a visual system brings you um, another character, which is the representation of this uh, video, video representation, uh, you connect one to another, but you still cannot understand what is in reality. Uh, this is, as I understand this argument. Mm -hmm. uh, what exactly. Exactly. What to do with uh, that? Uh, this is a very subtle thing, and uh, we, uh, I don't want uh, to uh, do a great discussion right now, because uh, <laughs> it's just a, a, a half an hour after midnight in Moscow, so uh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Artemy, I will send you our new uh, work about this uh, when we uh propose the process which we call semantic supervised learning uh which is uh, uh which is uh used to uh, resolve such a situation uh i hope so uh in in a shortly uh in short uh if we uh if we uh try to connect different symbols uh, which have uh, various modalities, uh, we will consider this situation just like a human uh, babies. Uh, what if we uh, show uh, to a little child who has no uh, any meaning in uh, its head uh, about uh, different objects uh, of the world? Uh, if we show, if we show uh, uh, them uh, something like uh, toys, uh, toy cars, uh, or toy, uh, or uh, some other toy. For example, uh, toy car, and we will uh, uh, name it this toy. Uh, for example, uh, human. We show toy car and uh, name human, and the, uh, we will form a connection in uh, their head. Uh, between uh, iconic representation of a car, of a car and a, a tonic representation of our voice uh, with the word human. Uh, but we will uh, not still form any conceptual symbol in uh, their head uh, because uh, the con concepts, the symbols uh, will form uh, only uh, after uh, we have... Uh, train uh, this uh, whole system uh, on very lots of examples uh, and after generalization of uh, various uh, things of various objects of various uh, sounds and uh, so on uh, we will form uh, different uh, conceptual symbols in uh, their uh, knowledge base but uh, when we design uh, the artificial uh, artificial agent uh, we will uh, we can uh, we could skip uh, this process uh, and uh, we can uh, uh, pre-program some uh, symbolic network uh, for a more exact uh, symbol grounding uh, ju not just uh, we we need to uh, train such a artificial agent uh, from the uh, zero ground, uh, I think so. Which one goes here? Excuse me. Which one goes here? Thanks a lot. Okay. Chinese. 
Ah, uh, yes, yes. Uh, okay, Howard. Yeah, quick question. I think uh, there, uh, Roman, thank you for the talk. I really like the, the uh, writing. It's, uh, I enjoy those talks more than slides. I miss people on Blackboard writing things, and I miss, so I like that. Um, I, I, I have just a, uh, a table for such a purpose. Tablet. Yeah, yeah. I really like that. It. it captures attention much better than slides. I really like that. Um, two things. One, there's the grounding problem, which I'm not going to talk about. I, I have my own ideas. Um, what you talked about in terms of the grounding, you know, there's a Harnan from the 1990s. He said almost the same thing you did about Cyril's thing. He talks about having a dictionary, learning another language. You don't know the first language. I, I think um, my own feeling is um, I think Harnan, Cyril, they're all wrong mathematically because I don't think things necessarily have to be grounded for it to work, but that's a whole other discussion. Any, another discussion, just like if you give me a bunch of data, I can use methods from um, Perl um, the last 20 years to change statistics. I can find causal relations even if I'm not grounded, but any, that's a whole other discussion. My issue is this. The other problem, there's two problems. There's grounding and then there's the binding problem. The binding problem I spoke with about this morning. I tried to do what you did last year and it won't work what you're showing. You're gonna have problems with fusing everything into that center and then that center, you're gonna to have to make decisions from it. It's not gonna work. You're gonna get combinatorial explosions and it won't work. It, it'll work if you, you, you can fuse something very simple. For example, in a self-driving car, if you have eight cameras and they're all video cameras, you can fuse the video cameras for one visual image. You're gonna have a hard time fusing everything the way you're doing it. You have to account for the binding. You somehow have to bind the information in a way um, that's, um, I think, a little bit more um, mathematically that'll work out. I don't, I don't think it's gonna work what you showed. Uh, yes, uh, it's a known problem. Uh, uh, we uh, just now we uh, carry out some experiments uh, about this and uh, try to find uh, the method of uh, how to say uh, the map the method of uh, choosing the right uh, action uh, because. Uh, uh, we think that uh, the main purpose, uh, the main goal of uh, symbol grounding is to uh, choose uh, the right action of uh, agent. And we uh, just now tell about embodied, uh, em yes, embodied uh, agents in our re reality. Uh, so uh, if we, uh, of course, if we have a very broad network of concepts uh, and we will uh, uh, and we will uh, fire any uh, associative link between them. Uh, we will uh, very quickly uh, go into combinatorial explosion. Uh, so we uh, just now we are searching for uh, this method of. Uh, um, something like binding the context into a uh, yeah. current situation. Yeah. Uh, just now, I can't uh, uh, say anything uh, exact about this, uh, just because we just carrying out the experiments. OK, I, I have the same problem, that's why. But, but I think there's two issues. One is grounding, the grounding issue. You know, and there's people, Cyril, Harnan, Varsalo, who, who write about it. I, I don't think they're right even, but that's a whole other issue. The, the, Harnan, Harnan, 1990, he wrote about trying to learn another, it, he said it's a better example, trying to learn another language. It's H-A-R-N-A-N-D, Harnan. Um, he gives almost the same example that you gave, um, Harnan, um, learning another language. Then the other issue is the binding problem. I think they're separate problems. And the binding problem is very challenging because the combinatorial explosion you get. But, yes. but I enjoyed the talk very much. It's late. Thank, thank you for the thank you for a wonderful lecture. But uh, I think uh, this problem is not unresolvable because we people how uh, we have some uh, methods of resolve it, uh, and I see something like lazy programming, uh, lazy uh, lazy computation from functional programming, something like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, there are lots of ways to solve it. There's always solutions, but but I think you have the problem is um, you, you have to you have to look for some subset that you want to solve, 
Um, what I was saying before, there's an equation of general intelligence from, um, I, I could put it, it'd be better if I put it on the screen from Legg and Hutter, um, 2008. Um, the problem is it uses Kolmogorov complexity. Once you have Kolmogorov complexity, you can't solve things, it's everything. You have to, for any, any of these problems, you have to pick some sort of subset exactly if you want to solve it. You have to do that, which is what I'm doing now in my own models. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. So, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you, Roman, for your talk. I, I guess we exhausted uh, all available time and we need to move further uh, to the talk of Adam Bennett.